Paul, if you'd maybe just like to share your screen, we'll, we'll make a start. So people should be able to see something. Yeah, we can see your we can see your desktop now. Okay. Right, so I'll just crack on, and um, if I can't necessarily see the chat that's going to be up on screen, um, so uh, Craig might be interjecting with comments. Or yeah, I, I can't see the chat either, but what we'll do is if anybody has any questions, if you just keep them to the end, and then we can answer the questions at the end, if that's okay with everyone. Uh, so this is what we're going to be looking at today. Um, it's one note, and this was the blurb that you saw in the webinar for which you have signed up. So before we um, get cracking, um, I'll just introduce OneNote um, so we can see what it's all about. Uh, OneNote is basically a set of digital notebooks. So down the left-hand side, these are the notebooks. I've got a notebook about the webinar today, um, and then a few examples um, which I've organized into different subjects. So the way it's, it's structured is you can have notebooks on anything you want down the left-hand side. And then within each notebook, you can have sections. So these are tabs along the top. So you can see for today's webinar, we've got the blurb um, and 10 reasons and which version of OneNote and collaboration. Now within each section, you can have pages. So we've got the description for today and here are some links. That's the link to the webinar and this is the link to the actual notebook, which is um, on OneDrive, on Glow, uh, and and you'll you'll get used to this as we go throughout. So um, back to the description, uh, and as you can see on the OneNote, you can have text and you can have pictures. Um, so let's go to ten reasons why you might like to use OneNote. Um, the first one is that some you might find it a bit easier to organise your digital resources when using a computer filing system. Um, and, and this screenshot here, this is a My Documents folder from um, one of the learners that I was involved with um, some time ago. And you can see what happens. Well, we know what happens with My Documents um, or even documents on, on school network drives. If you're not careful, they rapidly get completely out of control. So in here, we've got clicker documents and Word files and PDFs and HTML links and uh, graphics, all sorts, all mixed up. Um, you you will, of course, be looking at it and saying, why on earth wasn't it organized with English and maths and numeracy and whatever? Um, and indeed, that is a good question. Um, but it isn't. That's the way it is. And what happens is that rapidly, learners who are using any sort of digital technology, um, things get completely out of hand. And I think what we'll find is that OneNote is a good way to avoid this kind of thing happening. Um, so, first of all, you can find and organize your stuff much more easily, I think. So, the second reason is that it's a really good digital jotter. So, you know, we are thinking about learners who um, have some kind of difficulty using a paper jotter, and we want an alternative. And with a paper jotter, you can handwrite and you can draw and you can put in tables and re illustrations and bar charts and you can number things and it's you know it's a very flexible tool for recording and then a teacher or um, member of staff can come along and annotate preferably in green and not red uh, and make comments so it's a really flexible thing one note's kind of the same because you can type and draw anywhere on the page just like a um, a paper jotter. Uh, when you have a new, when you go into a lesson, you can have a new page for each lesson, and you can have different sections for different types of uh, activity, um, and you can mark up um, particular sections with uh, tags for homework. So it's a kind of like a really good digital alternative to a paper jotter. Third reason, though is that it does more than a paper jotter because you can put in screenshots and you can copy from web pages and you can have pictures and videos and audio recordings. And so if you're doing a bit of research then, and you find something useful, then you can whack it into OneNote. Um, and that's obviously something you can't do with a paper jotter. So here's an example. I found this earlier on. It's off the internet, off YouTube. I copied it, I pasted it, and now we can play it back. Yeah. <laughs> 
OneNote allows us to um, share information, it allows students to collaborate, and also it's a great way to share the information with the students. The notebook creation tool allows the teachers to create a notebook for every student and the teacher can access the student's work at any point in time. I link all my student addresses and immediately after I receive the link and from there the students basically click and their notebook is up. I'm able to share my OneNote notebook through the class website and prior to class they download those files and they can take their own notes right on top of the uh, notes that I'm projecting onto the screen. If I have a kid that's struggling, I can keep their notebook open all the time and keep up with how they're preparing for assessments, doing their homework. Voy a la página de Oliver Olivia Adams. One note, not only is it used here in the classroom, but at home. And the parents can then engage in the conversation with their students. And that's another wonderful way to communicate. Hola, me llamo Decker. For the first time in the 20 years that I've been teaching, I can hear my students at home. They're able to complete the assignment, listen to it, see if they're content with their response, and then I could go home, listen to the particular audio, and respond. And I could respond with either typing or writing comments or recording my voice. OneNote has made me a better teacher because I'm more efficient, I am more present for the students. It's just opened up a, a lot of ways for me to show up as a teacher. I see. The OneNote creation tool playing a huge part in the future of education. It allows us different ways to learn and to communicate in ways which we haven't been able to before. Um, so. I mean, that's obviously a Microsoft advert, so you have to take it with a pinch of salt, but uh, it demonstrates some of the key things about OneNote um, in a couple of minutes. So our fourth reason why you might like to consider is it's got a thing called learning tools um, to support access. So I'll demonstrate that. I'm going to go back to the blurb, and here's our demonstration here, um, description rather, and here's learning tools at the top. And we have a feature called Immersive Reader, so we can click on it, and it simplifies the text, um, takes out graphics, which you may or may not want, of course. So you can change the text size, you can change the setting, change the color, um, and then you can have it read out. Demonstrate how to set up OneNote digital jotters and explain how they can be used effectively as versatile, accessible workspaces for learners with additional support needs. OneNote digital jotters provide a practical solution for many learners who use technology instead of paper resources and materials to access the curriculum. Now just by the way, um, the voice that we've got here um, is Andrew. Um, and he's, he's not quite publicly available yet, but he's a Scottish child voice, which is almost going to be available. And the point about this version of OneNote, which is 2016, is that the immersive reader can, seems to be able to use the, the computer voices on your, uh, on your computer, um, whereas actually the, some of the other versions of OneNote can't. Um, so just something to bear in mind. Um, now that's immersive reader. Um, and, and it could be really handy for uh, learners with um, some kind of literacy difficulties. Uh, just while I'm on it, I'll go back and with my OneNote, as well as Immersive Reader, I've also put the Speak button up. In this webinar, Paul will demonstrate how to set up OneNote digital jotters and explain how they can be used effectively as versatile. Okay. Um, and that's actually built in to Office, both Word, and you can find it if you customise the, um, the tabs. Just click down, look for a thing called Speak, um, and then add it to your uh, toolbar and it will appear. There it is. There, see? Right, so back to 10 reasons. Um, now, it's easier than a word processor. One of the great things about OneNote, from my point of view, is I never have to remember to save things. Now, I know the new version of Word saves automatically if you've saved it on OneDrive, but um, OneNote, you've done that forever. Uh, it always starts up where you left off, so you close it down, you can type and draw anywhere, you can't do any folders, so that's good. Um, 
You can organise your digital life. Uh, you don't have to carry around piles of paper and books. And for a lot of the learners that we work with, um, this is a really important thing because um, wheelchair users in particular might have difficulty getting all their stuff out, the backpack that's strapped on the back of the, the wheelchair. Um, also, everything's in one place and you can find stuff much faster. Um, so it's much better. You know, I used to wander around uh, Scotland leaving piles of shorthand notebooks everywhere um, and now I don't tend to because I write it into one note. You can also find things. So um, uh, I know I did some notes about Sweden, and there it is. And you just click on it, and it takes you directly to it. And that's pretty cool. And as your um, materials get bigger and bigger. Another thing, number seven, um, is that you can access your notebooks on several different devices. So Windows, iPad, Android and Chromebook, and that's what I tend to use. Um, so I've got a, an iPad and I, I have my notebooks open on the iPad and you can put material in and then when you get back to your um, desk, desktop and, and call, then it's all magically appearing in front of you. Um, and the collaborating and sharing um, is a real good option. Uh, there was a, a learner I was working with in a primary school and an iPad was the best thing for him for a number of reasons. Um, and so all we did was set up a, a, a few OneNote notebooks, which he then shared with his teacher. And he created stuff, and his teacher could see it on her uh, classroom PC. And it was a very, is a very simple way of transferring stuff back and forward. We'll talk about collaboration, collaboration in a minute. You can collaborate in real time, um, uh, and and so uh, as a team, you could be working on the same thing. And the last thing is that. I've found it to be one note to be quite simple and reliable. Um, it very seldom seems to break, uh, and that's that's obviously a really good thing for students. Um, so, which version of OneNote? Well, there's three at least on Windows. OneNote Online, which looks a bit like this, uh, and the thing about OneNote Online is you've got to have the internet connection live for it to work. Um, or you can get OneNote for Windows. It looks a bit similar to OneNote Online. And on my machine, that's it there. And then our third version is OneNote 2016, which comes as Office 2016. That's the one I tend to use, but it's more out of habit than anything else. I guess it depends on which version of OneNote you've been supplied with and um, whether you can use them. Um, now, collaboration is a key here. And in the video, they talked about uh, using OneNote class notebook and it's set up so that a class teacher can create um, class notebooks for a whole class. That's not always the way that you might want to do it because it kind of relies on the class teacher doing it. So sometimes um, if we've got, if I've been working with a learner in an individual, in a particular school, um, particularly in the secondary, then I find it easier just to go and work with the learner directly. So you create, say, a geography folder, and we then share the notebook with the geography teacher. So if I knew the name, I would type it in here. Um, and you have a choice of giving editing um, for, uh, access or not. And then the only people that can see this geography notebook are the pupil and the subject teacher. The great thing about that is that it's very quick um, and uh, it's easy to do. Uh, and you don't have to learn how to use Classroom, classroom Creator. Um, so for uh, Classroom Creator, I think, is much a better solution for the teacher. But if you have to go around and teach everybody in the sec all the teachers in the secondary school how to do it, then it's going to take some time, whereas this is nice and straightforward. You just share it with the geography teacher, go and have a word with the geography teacher, and then the maths teacher, and uh, um, and then it's 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 much it's, it's, it might be easier for people to to, to organise. Um, so that's collaboration. Now some examples. Let's just rattle through very quickly. So here's a language example. Uh, the way I I often suggest um, you organise your folders is first of all according to subject, and then along the top are are different sections here. You might have a jotter. So this is the very basic um, uh, side of things. And this is an example of one of the learners that used OneNote. So it, it's 
um, each time he went into class, he added a page, and you can see them all down here on all sorts of different topics. Uh, and 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 so the very first one, um, so we've got a simple amount of text, we've got some drawing, and, and I'll just go down and show you very quickly the kind of things that you can do. It's not it's not you know massively um, exciting. Uh, but it's just very simple, and the point about this is that he was able to do it and find it again. Um, and as time went on, he got he got a bit more um, uh, adventurous with how he did it. So that's the jotter, and it's pretty straightforward. Along the top, another couple of examples. Um, we've got Stormbreaker. So at one point, he must have been looking at Stormbreaker. And one of the things about OneNote you can do is you can put the teacher can put a PDF in. So if I double click on this PDF, and there's the Storm uh, Stormbreaker book, and he's meant to be reading Chapter Eight, looking for trouble. So we can read through the book, and and then we've got a screenshot of the kind of questions that he's meant to be asking. And so what was on the square piece of paper? There was some Um, similarly, uh, notes about Good Night, Mr. Tom. And then our last example here is, this is uh, just a wee example taken from a Collins Primary Comprehension book, and so kind of recreated it in one note. And, uh, and, and this would be a good way for a teacher to do it, um, so that the, the task for the, the learner is just to complete the exercise. Um, and of course, once the learner's done that, if it's been shared with the teacher, then the teacher can use a variety of tools to interact with it and give feedback. So that's our language example. Similarly, we've got a spelling um, jotter here, spelling example, so a few items from the same learner. Uh, some obviously he's been working on Nelson's developing skills at some point. Um, and and it, so you can see it's kind of just like using a, um, a paper jotter, except it's on the computer. A few examples of numeracy. Again, we've got our numeracy, we've got our jotter down here. Um, you can have squared paper. So up here under view and rule lines, you can have none or you can have squared paper. Um, and then a couple of other examples. These are some um, tables we've popped in. And it's just a table here to make it a wee bit easier to lay out arithmetic. Um, got some graph paper and uh, another example of just embedding um, files into the book, into the OneNote, so that the learner can double click, open up the, the textbook and go down and access it. In this case, these are the textbooks from the Books for All database. Uh, so I think we're almost running out of time. Um, under Shirley's sample notebooks, she's got loads of Snazzier, much snazzier, more, more exciting things, um, showing the the kind of variety of pictures, text, bits of drawing, um, uh, things found from the internet, examples of homework, um, just a real variety of of stuff for geography, and history, and English, and math. Um, 
So we've got 10 reasons, something on which version, collaboration. Oh, and lastly, um, if you're looking for some examples, oh, there's more here, there's more here. Um, but here's an example of some a couple of notebooks that the Fife ESN team have created. I'll take you to them because they're really good. So this is not for the learners. This is for staff. And they've used OneNote to create um, online support materials um, covering accessibility. So we've got, the, the, again, the, the tabs down here and the, the pages within it. Um, so as a way of sharing and collaborating, you could almost view it as kind of making a website. Um, but because you can, it's very easy to do and very easy to share, then it's a, it's a quick way of doing it. So they've got them up for literacy and also for numeracy. Um, some links here as well. Uh, so if you want to find out about how it's been used at Carnoustie High School, I think this was, St Mungo's High School. Um, and this is quite a nice example. So pupil booklets showing the way that they've been used. Um, how they've organised the homework and it being marked there. Uh, a variety of just layouts. Lots of material down here on the left hand side. Um, but I see we're now past 20 minutes, so I think that's probably enough, and I'll go back, I'll stop sharing. And we can go back and see if there's any questions. Okay, thanks, Paul. And uh, if we just go back to the sharing, great, okay. Uh, oh, wow, 22 people, uh, so that's a, a great turnout. So if you do have any questions for Paul, and thanks, Paul, that was a really good uh, presentation session there. If you could just pop them into the uh, uh, chat pane below, uh, anything you'd like to ask? Can you share across different versions? Uh, how do you mean? Uh, well, actually, I, I, I guess, can you open a OneNote notebook in OneNote 2016 and OneNote on Windows and OneNote online? Yes. Is the answer to that. Yeah, so is it possible to use with adults? Uh, yes. Um, it depends on where you share your notebooks because if you're going to share them online, you need to have a OneNote, uh, sorry, a Microsoft account of some sort because the notebooks themselves are just saved on Microsoft OneDrive. So uh, in Scotland, we've got Glow OneDrive. Um, but you can also get a free personal one, uh, Microsoft OneDrive account um, that would let you sh let you save it on, um, on on just on a free personal one, uh, OneDrive. How do you access OneNote on iPad? Um, you just go to the App Store, um, find it, and and install it, and then set it up. You do need to set it up with your Microsoft account, with the same Microsoft account on all your different versions. Because you're not. That, that, yeah. yeah. It's a slight downfall, is it, of of one note poll? If you have different accounts, they can become a bit mixed up sometimes. Aye. Well, in fact, on my machine, I've got three accounts just to cause confusion. We've got Glow and the university, and I've got a personal one. Um, and so I have got umpteen notebooks and all sorts of different things. But for today's uh, demonstration, um, all I've got is some notebooks from Glow to try and make it look as much like what you'd have in a school as possible. Uh, well, thanks for that, Paul. Are there any other questions for Paul? I think if, if we, um, you know, you want to come back and watch the recording, the archived recording, where Paul has his links, um, these tend to be sort of clickable links, so if there's, an, if there's a document with a, a link on it, you could just go in and click on the links and get access to that information. I've got a quick question for Paul. How do you save a document? How do you mean? Well, I guess you might not know that it automatically saves rather than 
Oh, we'll get you. Aye. Well, the other great thing about OneNote is you don't need to save anything because it does it automatically for you. And um, if you're not, if you're running OneNote on the machine, you know, just OneNote, OneNote, um, then if you're not connected to the internet, it saves any work you've done on the machine. And then when you are connected to the internet, it uh, magically synchronizes it. Um, and actually, I find it very reliable. And that's why what, what, what I use it all the time for work, because you can um, uh, put stuff into the iPad uh, and just not think, um, and it will just uh, synchronize it all. Okay. Yes, um, that link I've put above is the notebook that I created for today's webinar. Um, and so you should be able to click on it you might have to log in with a Glow account. I could try that, shouldn't I? I'll try that. Do you want me to put it back to the screen? Uh, well, no, no, I think it should be okay. Certainly, I've clicked on it. Yeah, Sharon, Alison, it works sure. fine. That's good. That Don't want to possibly they might be on. They might have Glow accounts. That could be one reason why. You would never. But that's good. To work with you. You can access a OneNote notebook at school and Windows PC, then the same note on the phone, the bus home. Yes, that's the plan. And share it with the teacher. I just, uh, because I know Jane from, Jane Gillam from Edinburgh College is here just now and she does a lot of um, work with um, uh, adults, post exchange students, mm. for DSC, uh, for the DSC, and I, I really think that um, OneNote's a great tool for for students who have um, dyslexia type difficulties and who find you know managing their work or managing their information difficult. I think it's really good for for that. Yeah. So um, I certainly recommend it, Jane. We used to use it at, at Napier University, and students really liked it when once they got to know the way around it. And Doug Bell, yeah, Borders College of Promoting. Good work, Doug. That's great. Yeah, good. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Jane. Nice and compact, yeah. Well, that's right. I think it, it, there, the, you can do terribly clever things that make it look pretty. But the, the basic um, message, I think, is uh, if you just want to have a convenient way to take notes, sort them out, um, organize them according to your own personal preference, you know, to structure your your stuff. Um, then it's it's a really good way of doing it. And because you don't never you never need to save anything, it does it for you. And you can access it on different machi uh, machines, um, and you can save it with a teacher. Then it's one of these uh, few things which actually makes life easier. I think. We may have overlooked Pauline's question. She's just asking, do pupils need a Microsoft account to access this? Yeah, you do. Well, um, yes, you do. Um, if you're wanting to save your notebooks on OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive, then you need to have an account um, to do it. Well, Judy, I'm glad Paul has inspired you, so that's good. <laughs> Go home and have a play. I mean, it's, it's, there's always the undo button if you do anything wrong. So, um, <laughs> Okay, thanks, Julie. Thanks for coming along. Uh, and if there aren't any more questions, I think we'll just uh, we'll close the session. That was great, Paul. Thanks That's very great. much. That's great when the technology works. Yeah, no problems. Hazel as well. Thanks, Hazel, for joining, one of our regulars. Okay, thanks, everyone. We'll close the session now, okay? Thanks to Paul. Right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, have a nice afternoon.